This is Tetris, and this is a Discord bot. But can you make a Discord bot that runs Tetris? In this video, I'm going to answer that question by making a whole ass Tetris game that can be played in any Discord server. And to make things even more interesting, if it doesn't turn out amazing, then I'm going to make myself eat some of this world's spiciest chocolate. <coughs> so to start, I just made a Discord developer account, created a bot and added it to a new server. It was easy to get some starter code running, and so my first task was to get the bot to send a message. <laughs> yes. You love to see it. Obviously, going from here to a full-fledged Tetris game is going to be insanely difficult. So let me explain to you my full process with how I'm going to make the game work. Every Tetris board is made up of 200 squares laid out with so. To represent these squares in Discord, I want to send a message with 200 square emojis. For example, the empty board would be made up of purely black squares. From there, I can then change the colour of some of the squares to represent Tetris pieces on the board. However, Discord only has a few different colours for the square emojis, so I decided each shape should use these colours. I then moved on to implementing this and I've decided it would look better sent as one of those Discord embeds. So an embed is basically just giving it this fancy box around it. So after that, this is what the user sees for the board, but in reality, I'm just sending a message spamming black square, 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 black square. Now you may be asking yourself, but how does the user actually play the game? The answer is by using message reactions. I can make the bot react to its own message with different emojis and then the user can click one of them to add their own reaction to the message. This basically works as a button since a bot can then read that the user is reactive to something and then take the required action. So after creating a start screen by writing some tutorial text, I added the play reaction so now when that is pressed the bot instantly removes the user's reaction and edits the message to start the game. Then I make it add all the directional emojis that the player will later be able to use to move the Tetris pieces when playing. However, the next step in the process is writing a function to get a random Tetron emoji spawn. Each piece has its own starting coordinates and I edit the board emojis to place it. As you may be able to tell, this is where the magic comes into play. The aim is to constantly edit the message with the new positions of the shapes as they change, giving the effect of a moving game board. So with this Tetris piece, we want it to start falling. To do that, the code checks if the emojis below the shape are empty ones or not, and if they are, it's moved one down by changing the required emojis. But this is how it came out. After a quick fix, I made sure the code changes the old coloured squares back to black empty ones. But then I realised a big problem. See how the piece goes down fast and then pauses for a bit before going again and it just keeps pausing? I came to realise that the Discord owners are attacking me just because of how sick at coding I am. They didn't expect anyone to be able to do this and so now they're throttling me. Nah. Apparently you're only allowed to make 5 API requests every 5 seconds, meaning I can only edit the message once a second. It now has to be a lot slower than I originally planned for, meaning it's unfortunately getting very likely that I'm going to have to eat some of that chocolate. I also added a button to stop the game, which works by just deleting the whole message. The pieces will currently keep falling, even if another one is in the way, so after a lot of struggling, they now stop if they make contact with anything, including the bottom of the board. Obviously, you can't really distinguish the shapes right now, so to fix that, I gave each Tetris piece its own weird Discord colour. Now, as you can see, waiting for each Tetron to fall is boring as hell, so I started implementing the down button. The function of this button is to automatically check for the lowest free space below it, and go straight down and fill that position. So I attempted to code that, but it didn't really go to plan. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, this is something. And then this one's not going straight down either. Wait, so if I do. Okay, now that one was one more. Now this one's coming in. If I send down. And it broke. <laughs> For fuck's sake. A bit more coding though, and now look at it. Go straight down. Yes! Holy shit. Let's move on to the next one. I'll press down. Come on. Oh my god. It's like an actual Tetris game. I started working on making it so you can move the Tetronimals left and right by changing the shape positions horizontally. At first it would get stuck constantly going the one way, but then I sorted it. Now the game's really starting to take place, but this is where it gets tricky. I need to make it so the pieces can rotate, which means having to do mass, which means fighting the urge to kill myself. For this rotation, I have to essentially work out where the new coordinates will be of each Tetris tile compared to where they were before. Luckily for me though, I found a great article that explains all of this in detail. You can sort of apply a formula to rotate them, but then you usually have to adjust the position afterwards depending on certain states. For example, if you try to rotate next to walls or anything, the game has to go for a set of offsets and decide which one to make before it will either fit somewhere or just reject the rotation altogether. I did really struggle to get all the different elements of rotation working, but after channeling my inner genius, I succeeded. Or at least it looks good enough for me. Then I started making it so the game is actually playable. So when you line up enough Tetronimos to clear a line, it would delete that row and bring the whole rest of the shapes above down one. Unless you clear a higher line there. Now after that, I made it so it works on any line and it will also clear multiple lines at a time. It does this just by constantly checking every line to see if there's any lines that don't contain an empty square 
and then makes those adjustments. Next still, I made it so if the shape stacked too high and the player loses, then the game detects that and edits a message to a game over screen. Then the final part to do was to keep track of how many lines the player clears and add the points when they do so. I made it so you can see the points at the end of the game, officially meaning it's finished. <laughs> We went from a simple text message to a whole ass playable game. In my opinion, it's pretty cool, but I'll admit it kind of does suck due to how slow it is. So, I guess I gotta eat that chocolate. Oh my god. I have a tongue burning. Oh my god. Oh, my tongue is actually genuinely killing me. It's actually, no, I'm not even joking. Ah, it stinks. Bloody hell.